at him and say, you sure? You know, you're kind of young. You've only been in the Senate a couple of years. What makes you think you're ready for this? He said, I have a vision. I think I know where this country needs to go, and I want to try and take it there. So whatever you do in life has to begin with a vision. What is it you're trying to accomplish? What purpose are you after? And then you have to translate that vision into specific goals and missions that you are trying to achieve. If you don't do that, it's just a vision floating up there. And then you have to organize yourself. You have to be absolutely honest in measuring the opponent or the enemy, as we've been saying in the military. You have to be deadly honest in measuring your strengths and your weaknesses. We teach this to all of our young leaders in the Army. Know yourself, know your enemy. Know yourself, know your opponents. Know yourself, know the situation you are getting into. And then once you have done that, once you have a clear statement of what you're trying to accomplish that's driven by a vision, then you start to organize your forces. In the military, we bring our battalions and divisions together. We make sure we have all our logistics. We make sure we have air support. In politics, you start to reach out and bring people together, bring forces together. Reach out to the south, to the west, to the east, to the north. Reach out to minorities. Try to get yourself known throughout the country as a person of purpose. You may end up being leaders of only 10 people in an office, or maybe 100, or maybe 1,000. It's the same thing. Become known as a person of purpose. Become known as somebody that people will trust. Become known as a person with a solid reputation, a person of character, a person that people will look up to. And then the next thing he taught us in the military and the next thing I saw Mr. Obama do was understand that leadership is all about followers. I was taught from the very beginning that the role of a leader is to put followers in the best possible environment to get the job done. If you're not a leader, you don't have followers. Oh, you might be a visionary leader, but you don't get things done unless you have followers. And the best leaders I've known are those who know how to not just motivate followers, that's a nice word, but you want to inspire followers. EMI stands for that, and that I is inspire people. Inspire people to believe in you. And if your leadership is infectious because you have a vision, because you have a sense of mission and vision and purpose, then people will vibrate with you. So as young leaders getting yourself ready, always make sure that you approach your leadership task with a sense of passion, a sense of enthusiasm, so that everybody catches that enthusiasm and everybody wants to do what you want to do. Make sure that above all, you understand the importance of followers. You can't be an effective leader if you are sort of, you know, above it all. I'm in my office. The followers are doing what they do. You've got to be there with the followers. You've got to inspire them. They've got to see you sacrifice along with them. In the military, they teach us, Lieutenant Powell, General Powell, you may be cold, but you must never show to your soldiers that you are cold. You may be afraid, you may be terrified, but you must never show fear to your soldiers or to the enemy. You may be hungry, but you will always eat last. You may be tired, but you will make sure your soldiers rest before you rest. A leader sets the example, and by setting that inspirational example, you inspire others. Always have to make sure that all of your energies go into preparing the followers for the battle ahead. A quick story. Many years ago, I commanded a battalion in Korea. It was a combat battalion. We were about an hour away from the DMZ. If the North Koreans ever came through, we were the ones that were going to have to fight. So it was a tough outfit. We were a good outfit. And one day I was walking through my battalion area, just checking things out, and I was wearing my combat uniform, and I saw a soldier coming the other way. And he was in his green uniform, his formal uniform, which was unusual. So I knew he was in my battalion, I could see his insignia. He saluted me, and I stopped him, and I said, why, why are you in the uniform? Where are you going? Where have you been? And he'd just been to the brigade headquarters, the next level up. And he said, I had competed for your battalion, sir, I was the candidate to compete in the monthly Soldier of the Month competition. 
where we send soldiers down to be interviewed by a bunch of tough sergeants, and one of them gets identified as the best for that month. And I said, well, how'd you do? He said, uh, well, I didn't make it. I, I, didn't, I didn't do very well. I'm sorry, sir. I said, well, thank you for representing me anyway. Uh, when were you told you were going to be the soldier of the month candidate? He said, well, I didn't get called about it till last night. <clears throat> I went crazy. Went back to my headquarters, got all of my sergeants together, got all my officers together, and said, we will never, ever do that again. We will never, ever fail to prepare one of our soldiers for a competition or a battle that we are sending him into. If I can't prepare a soldier for a simple competition with other soldiers, how can he have confidence in me that I can prepare him to fight the North Koreans? And so leadership is all about taking followers.